Good afternoon. Good afternoon, uh, Mr. Lim, uh, presiding officer. Good afternoon, uh, fellow members of the faculty, prop parents, and graduates. Before I start, I would like to thank MDS for inviting me back to the alma mater and giving me the opportunity to speak today to all of you. Upon receiving this invitation, I thought uh, very hard about what to say. I think uh, most of you, like me when I was uh, in your age, will find most bo uh, speeches boring. Right? So I sincere, it's my sincere wish that each and every one of you will leave this auditorium today with something valuable from what I'm going to say. When I was an undergrad, MBS was then known as a school of accountancy and business. Right, just like when uh, uh, Chao and myself were in here, it's known as SAB, uh, not MBS. It's safe to say that a lot of other things have changed as well. When I was in NTU, I was president of two clubs, two student clubs, represented the school, the varsity and hall in various team and individual sports and activities. You can say that I love NTU so much that I started teaching in NTU MBS uh, five years ago. And uh, when the chairman asked me to join the board, I readily agreed. Right? Uh, uh, so this is uh, my history of uh, giving back and more to come. Most of you must have also wanted to get your final years in university over and done with. But for me personally, it was also the year, the final year, that brought me the most happiness. It was then that I get to know my uh, girlfriend and now my wife. Right? So now I have uh, three lovely children. So now you know why I serve on three committees in NTU, one for each of my child. So I'm very thankful for all the opportunities that NTU has given me. So please allow me to share just three observations to, uh, to, and hopefully you can take something back with you as you embark on your new phase of your life. But the first lesson has to do with uh, perseverance. Right. When I was a student, I did not have straight A's like some of you, but I was fortunate enough to get a, a job uh, in, in a big uh, local company after upon graduation uh, on a with a scholarship. So one of the first thing when I first started work, right, uh, back in 95, was to, was to notice that in this company that I first started work, right, there is a difference in standard of the toilets, both between the manager and executive and the normal officers and below. So, I felt a deep sense of uh, injustice and I proceeded to speak to the Director of Human Resources in my first month in, in that job. I'm sure many of you must be thinking, what was he trying to do? Right. And that was precisely what the Director of HR was thinking as well. So he told me, she told me three things. First, the issue is none of your business. Second, you are too arrogant. Third, go back to work. So clearly, and possibly, I must have angered one of my superior, right, we were, which were not bought well for my career prospect. However, if you ask me now whether I will go back to do it again, I definitely will do it. Right? Uh, I strongly believe uh, in that everyone uh, who contribute to the company or the society should be treated respectfully. But uh, I thought that I had forgotten about this incident until 15 years later, right? one five, 15 years later, when I happened to meet the CEO of the firm today, and somehow I mentioned about this situation to him. And uh, he immediately acted on it, and today there is no differentiation of standards in this uh, local company. I think many of us, especially in Singapore, have been conditioned to fear failure. And sometimes the initial failure or setback put us off eventually uh, achieving our, put us off eventually of achieving our objective. But there are benefits to failures and persevering past it. The transition between university to the workplace is not always easy. And there are bound to be a lot of times as you embark on your, on your new, new journey that you don't get things right even after, after multiple attempts. Some of these things, like what I did, might get you into trouble with a superior and some of these things might hinder your career progression. When faced with such situation, please do not be disheartened. It is all right to fail and it's all right to make a mistake, as long as you put your heart to, to it and persevere. 
This brings me to my next point of having the courage to ask for what you want. I think most of us have been brought up with an Asian or Singaporean mentality, which places large emphasis on respect for those in authorities and in senior positions. While there is certainly a lot of value and truth to this, we sometimes forego the opportunity to share our best ideas and what we have, especially in a respectful manner. Hopefully, the next story will reinforce you just how important it is to just ask. Right? So when I was uh, 31 years old, well, actually, I relocated to America for four years. Right? Uh, I, I, and I work in one of the largest hedge funds in the world, right, in Connecticut. The hedge fund industry in the U.S. and on the trading floor is very rough. Right? It's very rough and tumble. I'm the first Asian uh, at my level to join the hedge fund. But I was not hired as a senior person. I was hired as a supporting analyst. So it was very different. And I always think that I will be fired. Why? Right? Because nobody really understands my spoken English. But on the very first day of the hedge fund, I went up to the founder, who I only met for the first time. I told him I have an investment idea. Right. And this investment idea is that at that point of time, back in 2001, there's this bank called Bank Mandiri, right, that it was going for IPO and the local uh, shareholders who are from Indonesian origin will get the shares 20% cheaper than the other shareholders. So I told him, my founder, I met him for the first time, give me $20 million in cash, fly me to Indonesia, I'll buy up as much local shares as possible and arbitrage the opportunity. So the founder looked me into the eye and said that, you must be crazy. I just know you and you want 20 million in cash and fly you to Indonesia. So of course, the investment idea did not, uh, did not uh, get started. Why? But that experience and that opportunity to exchange an idea with him uh, give me a different uh, viewpoint and give the management also a different viewpoint of me. And very soon I was managing the book, well, the investment book, and ultimately I was sent back as the head of Asia to start the Singapore office or the Asian office. Of course, the key here, using these two examples, is not wise to speak carelessly. Before you do, you must have the ability to back it up. You are unlikely to make a good impression if you are not sufficiently prepared. I, for, on this case, I only approached the founder because I was giving the, a lot of attention on this investment idea. Right. It was uh, really important that I did this, uh, or the first day on the job could also have been my last day. So, finally, where do all these examples bring to the end? Right. I would like to share with you the one insect you should aspire to be like. It is the one that I feel today will thrive the best in the corporate world, the cockroach. Most of us see the cockroach as a pest. And those who stay in the hall will probably be well acquainted with them, well, especially the older halls. So why should I say on today that you should be like a cockroach? So three, uh, uh, three portions, just for you to think about. First, cockroaches are highly adaptable. They are able to survive in extreme environment, and it is said that they can survive even a nuclear blast. Well, as you know, they have been around for millions of years. In the new workplace that you're going to join, it's very important to adapt. Unlike in, unlike in your FYP or in your project groups, you do not have the chance to choose your co-workers or your colleagues. If you want to succeed, you must be either able to adapt to different types of people and different situations as they may come your way. Second, we all know that the cockroaches are found in the dirty years of places. In the working world, it is not all that different. I know many of you are very ambitious, right, especially for business and accounting uh, grads. Right? I know you have very good grades to come here to study in NTU, right? but maybe you should take aside your sense of entitlement and, and look at the surrounding first. Right? Uh, it, it's not easy right, uh, for, for, for you on the first day to roll up your sleeve and do all the dirty work, right? meaning staying back and, and uh, even simple things like buying coffee for your trader on the trading floor, things like this, which is quite normal. Right? I just want to say that it is during this process that you learn about your own limits and expand your comfort zone. So I just want to challenge you, especially those who, who think that uh, the degree is the end of the world. No, it's just the starting. 
right, of your learning process. I think the corporate world, the outside world, uh, is, is, will give you a lot more challenges uh, to your learnings. And last but not least is that cockroaches have the ability to live without food for a long period of time. Well, in fact, uh, they can even live without their heads for weeks. Even though they possess these superpowers, they come together as a collective source to source for food. So what we can learn here is that while some of you are extremely smart and competent, right, we are, we'll still have to work together as a team. Right? This is the same in the real world. No one knows everything and no one can be excellent in every area. We all have to adapt and learn from one another. I've always had these African proverbs that stay with me. If you want to run fast, run alone. If you want to run far, run together. In my time as a university undergrad, I make many friends who has gone on to become a strong support of my life. Next week, I'm celebrating my birthday, right? and many of them are my old friends at NTU who are coming. And these are the people I can rely and trust on. Right? When we gather, we always talk about the good times that we had in school and the different challenges we now have to overcome uh, as a father, as a parent, as a mother. Right? I hope all of you go on to forge similar friendships. Right? That's my most sincere hope today. And please don't take it for granted. I know many of you have time on your side, right? but uh, do seize the day. For myself personally, I've lost two of my friends in NTU since I graduated. Why it's a very painful process, uh, why the, so I, I hope you do treasure the friendships, people around you. I wish you the very best in life. Be a core coach. Thank you very much. <laughs>